Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. Hi there, everybody. As you can see, we have a different setting now. We created a little studio in my office in Holland, and I'm going to welcome the next guest in the Power of Women in Business talk show. So next to me is Jacqueline van der Lem. She's a Dutch business owner and she's the owner of Lemtech Air and Environment Techniques. And what her company does is they bring complete solutions to extract fine dust from the work floor in factories and other technical companies. They are the specialists in extracting fine dust, welding fumes and many other. The factory owners who are her clients, they need clean air in the working environment for their workers. And they are the most important to Jacqueline. Welcome Jacqueline, so nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, You are a woman in a typical male industry. Yes. So what does that do for you? Um, well, it brings uh, a lot of good things. Uh, it's really nice uh, when you was as a child already interesting in techniques mm -hmm. uh, and make something with your hands. It's nice when you have the opportunity to do what you like. So I was very young, 16 years that I go to uh, the school of the steel company Hooghovers. Nowadays you know it as Tata. And there I learn uh, the business as a welder. And then uh, I make 12 years, uh, first seven years I work in the steel company uh, Tata. Also go for Tata to uh, Australia to do the building of a new industry. And uh, after seven years, I leave Tata and go in the welding industry. And now, at 2000, I started my own business. I am an European welding technician, uh, the first woman in Holland, 28 years ago. And it is such a nice job, welder, but the circumstances are so tough that I decide that you have to do that uh, job in better circumstances. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, it, it, it started with a passion. And, and it started with something that you saw that needed improvement. Yes, yes, that needed an improvement and that also uh, needs more uh, developing. Yeah. Because there was not really much at that days. So, because you were breathing all this fumes yes. and all this dust yes. and metal dust as well. Yes. Yeah. And as a woman, but I think also uh, because of my age, yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, the, the same is for the men, mm -hmm. yeah, because we have all one uh, health. Yep. Yeah, it's really important <laughs> uh, to, uh, be, <laughs> to build the uh, old uh, on a good way. So um, I thought when I do this tough job, uh, so young, my whole life, it will be too tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, in these circumstances, I don't love it. No. Uh, so, uh, but I like uh, the metal, I like the industry, so I was thinking when I do something for my own, mm -hmm. it must be in my favorite way and that is the metal industry. Wow, yeah. So it takes a woman <laughs> to uh, discover something which is not right for everybody in this industry working and she decided I'm going to be the one to change. You're not the only one anymore at the moment, huh? No. There's many other companies doing the same. There are many other companies doing the same. Also, 
one company uh, started with a young woman, also with a woman, and there is one company that has also a woman in the uh, uh, in the board. Board, yes. So uh, no, we are not. Uh, I'm not really. But you started. Anymore. You started the trend. Um, no, I, I, because of my developings, um, yeah, it was important that other companies also were thinking, well, when we want to have business, uh, we must develop also. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yes, I, I uh, how do you say that? I trigger them to do also a step forward in Good. the production. Okay. Yes. And now you work internationally. Yes. Why did you start to go international? Uh, now, I started my own company in 2000 and on that time I, I sell already international mm -hmm. from other countries but I was not, uh, oh no, I buy, sorry, I buy uh, already stuff from other countries but mm -hmm. I was not selling. Mm -hmm. And then in 2010 I got the opportunity to get the Benelux mm -hmm. uh, and then I thought it is easy to start with the Benelux because Belgium is uh, our neighbor and they mostly speak our language so how difficult can that be but that was a misunderstood thing <laughs> yes yes I think it's easier when you start with a company in another language because then you know there is a difference a difference okay. yes Yes. Yeah, that's true. And Benelux is, uh, is an alliance we have with uh, the Netherlands, uh, Belgium and Luxembourg. All three very small countries and we do a lot together eh, on trade yes. uh, part as well. So, uh, what do you like about doing business internationally? I like um, other cultures. I like to meet other people. I like to see how they do the things. Mostly they do it difficult. Mm -hmm. You can learn about each other, you can share with each other. And I think nowadays the world is very small. So in that small world with social media, yeah. it's really good that you are connecting with each other. And yeah, I have very much uh, fun and joy doing international. Not always easy, but it's really nice to do that. Yeah, so there you go, you say it's not always easy. No. Uh, so what challenges do you face, Jacqueline? Um, the challenge is, in my business, uh, it all comes, uh, there are laws about this situation, and in either country there is an own law. Every country has its own laws and certifications. Yes, and some, some countries don't have a law, okay. eh, but has um, a, a, a not so formal way where they say uh, how to do the things. But uh, I think it's important because we all have one health the, and the world is small that there is one law about this situation. Because the welder in the US is just the same important yeah. as the welder here in Holland or in Germany or in Asia. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, also, so that is um, technical from my job, but also uh, all the countries has own rules. Uh, rules uh, about uh, tax, uh, rules about uh, how easy it is or not easy to work with your people in that country. Yeah, we also do, uh, we make the installation there mm -hmm. yeah? and it's not always easy to go with your men there. Uh, I like to do the work in other countries also with people from that country yeah? because I believe that you can do things smart yep. and I also do a lot of business with other Dutch partners with a lot of international experience okay. to uh, have the connection together and make it to a, a very big and nice uh, project. Wow, interesting. So I like what you say that you want to cooperate with the people 
in yes. the country and yes. you want to employ the people in that country. Yes. But that's not always possible because they don't have the skills or why do you also need to bring in people from Holland? Um, no, no, I can give an example. Uh, I had a project in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, yeah. And um, there um, we have to build seven installations mm -hmm. and then we build one installation here in Holland. Um, make that all complete visually okay. and with the papers yeah. and then all the installations go on transport by truck mm -hmm. and then uh, they have official information yeah. how to build there. they have a sample yes uh -huh. and um, then they can build there by their own okay. the other six with always uh, the situation that when they have a problem and it's not easy to do the things that one of my high uh, yeah. technicians mm -hmm. uh, uh, picks the flight and okay. uh, go to there. But mostly of the time it's not necessary. Okay, good. So how many people do you employ? Uh, I employ uh, totally 11. Okay. Eight uh, by my own company and three men always uh, flexible. flexible, but always uh, for 18 years still working for me. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's so people stay with you. They don't go. No. no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's possible that they go, but mostly that is in a short time. Yeah. yeah because uh, then they don't are, fit your yes, culture. We are a flexible firm, and it's not a nine to five firm. Mm. So you have to do. Um, you have to see it as your own firm. Yep. We do it in a small team, and we all have our own responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there are people that. They're not fit for that. Yeah. Then they leave uh, in a year, or they stay forever. forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's good. Because uh, do you think it matters uh, that you're a woman uh, uh, organizing? D does it matter to them? Because I assume most of your staff is are men. No. No. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it matters that I am. Um, uh, uh, a, a woman as an owner, yeah, and I have sixty uh, percent of women in my company. Also so. the technician. Yes, wow. also the technician. Oh. Uh, and I think it's I think it's easier for an other women that is technical that uh, she's working with a uh, a firma with a lady on the top. True. Then uh, with a firm with all men. Yeah. And so, uh, okay. but but for us, it's always important that uh, the real person is for the, the best real person. Job. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. So, so you attract more female technicians to your business. Yes. Well, that's that's good. Yes. <laughs> and I think it would be really important that there are a lot of women. More women. That yeah, more women mm. uh, that they um, employ themselves to be technical. Yeah, I try to persuade there are my daughters. A lot of chances. There yeah. are a lot of chances. <laughs> my daughters won't. <laughs> I try to persuade them. But yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, what um, you you also work in the states and yes. uh, and you do a project there and yes. you got encountered with the law America first. Yes. Uh, tell us what you faced with that working from Europe going to the states. Yeah. Now, um, first I want to say that uh, I think it's a really good attitude to say America first. Mm -hmm. I think every country has to say that to their own country. Thank and because you. it's important to, to always put your own country on the first mm. level. Yeah. In this time and this uh, economy, you need other countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I was starting in the end of 2016, mm -hmm. uh, just before uh, Trump uh, was uh, the president, one day after Trump was the president, <laughs> I go uh, to a machine in America uh, because of a new product mm -hmm. we want to buy from them. And um, yeah, we have buy that, we had sold a lot, mm -hmm. and that was the start. Then there was a project. Um, they already started in 2015 mm -hmm. and uh, that project should stay in America. Mm -hmm. So um, we did on the side some of uh, the business, mm -hmm. but they say, well, okay, we want to have it uh, in America. 
But then they come to Netherlands again and said, no, I think uh, we need a flexible country <laughs> because <laughs> it's a really hard project. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we are flexible. And um, so the f it's for Boeing. So it's really a Boeing. serious, okay. serious partner. Um, so we uh, started with other Dutch firms mm -hmm. um, in the Netherlands with three, and um, yeah, we make now a pilot for the for the mm -hmm. airplane industry, and yeah, I hope it will be great. Yeah, and then the same way when we give the example, for me it's no problem that after that. They do it in America yeah. and in Europe, and yeah, because it's a solution for the whole world. So you initiate it, yes, and then it won't only be Boeing; it will probably other islands yes, as yes, well. Yes, yes, KLM also. Eh? Our our, our company Dutch, also. Yeah, yeah. our Dutch yes. uh, KLM. Uh, yes, oh, okay, fly. Wow. So so you 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 did face the issues with the law America first, but yes. then they realized, hey, we cannot do it here the way we want it. Yes. And, uh, and apparently then they can escape the law, yeah, if they can't do it in America, then they can no, come to I, you. I think they don't have to escape the law. Okay. I think it's more free, uh -huh. uh, as it must be free for every country. Uh, it is good to try to do it in your own country. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then you have the opportunity to do it not, when it's not possible, or to see who is your right partner. Yeah. Uh, and then you can choose the right country. And for this project, we're that was, that we're was happy the that it's the Netherlands. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Um, you, you, you are an advocate for women in business, yes. like, like I am. So, um, what advice do you want to give to other women? Um, I want to advise them uh, also have a, a coach, because it's really nice to uh, spar with people because it can be lonely at the top, mm. especially when you have big issues, uh, are not afraid, pick the opportunity, know what your selling points are mm. and know why they want you, why they uh, need you, make that visualized because uh, visualizing the things is more easier in a lot of countries mm -hmm. um, and yeah start but before you start look always what are the situations in the countries which one which country I want to start with uh, um, and I think it's good to start with an European country uh, and then go overseas yeah, but it is really important to know which country I want to do business with, yeah. what is the culture there, what is the business culture there, because that are also two things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, go ahead. We need you. <laughs> oh, yes, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we do this talk yeah. show, to encourage more women to go and, yes. and do business internationally. Yes. Definitely. So, what do you think there should be uh, for women when they do business internationally? I think it will be good when there is a platform mm -hmm. uh, where all the do's and don'ts stay mm -hmm. in, a, in a, a clear way mm -hmm. for all the countries mm -hmm. or the world parts. Mm -hmm. So that you have uh, something to start with in the basis, what you must know. Okay. And then I think it's really important to have um, uh, business trips or uh, handles missions. Trade missions. Trade missions yeah. to that country you because there they can bring you in the really uh, good context. Yeah, I, de I definitely agree with trade missions. That's actually where we met. Yes. On, on, yes. A, on a trade mission. Yes. Uh, and if you go to your uh, local chamber of commerce or go to your government, uh, there you can see which trade missions they will organize. Every country does this. Usually a prime minister, a president, uh, a very important football coach. Uh, they, they are like the the star, the role model, uh, who attracts the people, but you can go along. Our queen and king, they often go, uh, and they, they attract the big names, and you can go in the slipstream, the mainstream, usually big companies join, and it doesn't matter if you are with a small business with three or four people, you, sh you, you should still join, because you can change your network completely. 
Yes. Yeah. It's true. And before I, well, so far, I have been on trade missions with only women. I'm not going to do that anymore because the the businesses are small. We not, a lot of women have small businesses, and that's that's no problem. That's why we are here all together to grow and share our knowledge. But it's also good to uh, to go on mixed uh, trade missions. Yeah. For me, it's also good. Uh, in Holland, there is a very good initiative uh, that uh, the name is NL is growing. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, there are uh, women and men mm -hmm. uh, together, small firms and really big firms. Yeah. And uh, they share together, and then you can also have uh, choose your own coach uh, in a totally other business mm -hmm. to let you grow. Okay. And Maxima is also um, connected with yeah, that. Queen, in, Queen Maxima. Yeah, Queen Maxima. Queen Maxima, yeah, yes, okay. yes. So, wow, uh, Jacqueline, we are coming to an end. Yes. Um, is, is there anything you would like to ask this audience? Are you looking for something? Uh, do you need help with something? Or do you just want to comment on something? Uh, I think the world is so small nowadays. Uh, when there is a clear situation, just like that platform, but also in other things, to share, I think when there is a platform, you can share your new products, you can share your uh, excellent projects, mm -hmm. where the world can have something on it. Yeah, yeah? Which, which benefits the world. Yes, which yeah. benefits the world, because in, in, our, um, in our work it's really important that the health for people will be, and, and we know already that in other parts of the world it is not like here no. in Europe or Holland or yeah. America, yeah. it's more, much worse. So please let we help each other to make there a better world. Wow, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so, if you want to uh, get connected with uh, Jacqueline, at the end of the video, you will see all her uh, details, you will see her website, you, you will see her uh, LinkedIn profile. And just to comment a little on a platform, I haven't been speaking about this so far, but that's exactly what I'm building. I'm building an international platform for women who do business internationally. If you are interested, just watch the end of the video. You will see a little ad. You can watch on the, have a look at the website. And what we do is in various countries in the world, we create little hubs of women doing business international. They meet live in person every month, but we always connect all of them online in a community. So thank you for bringing that issue up, uh, Jacqueline. I don't like to promote all the time because this is about the content you have to share and yes. all my guests yes. have to share yes. but i think it's important for you to know as well that you know women who do business internationally we are a special kind uh, women in business are yeah. are already different but doing business internationally is even more different yeah. and i believe if we all connect and if we all share like we do with this talk show we can learn so much from each other. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I totally agree. Okay. And it's necessary yeah. in the world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because like what you say, um, there are so many countries who need our services, who yes. need our products yeah. to improve the well-being over there for their people and yes. their, yeah, their, their men and children. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Jacqueline, for your excellent contribution and for being a, a great role model uh, of a woman in the tech industry and that you advocate that more women will come. So thanks yes. so much for your time. and um, I just have a lot of joy for <laughs> <laughs> 36 years in the, in the technical wow. industry. So uh, it brings a lot of joy. Oh. It brings a lot of joy. Yeah, yes. I can see that. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>